What is good and welcome back to the Waltz Freestyle Trick Tip where every week we break down a freestyle skateboarding trick and challenge you to go out and learn it. Now if you're not familiar with what freestyle skateboarding is, sometimes it looks a little bit like this. As usual, we're covering three freestyle tricks and three stationary tricks because a lot of you at home are stuck inside, stuck skating on carpet or in a little corner of concrete, whatever it is. And these tricks are perfect for that. So today we're covering the heel side rail stand, the boardwalk and the yo-yo hop. So let's get right to it, the rail stand. Now in the previous trick tip, we talked about the tail stop heel side rail stand and that's fun and all, but today we're talking about something a little bit different and that is the regular heel side rail stand with pressure pulling the board up. For the heel side rail stand, you'll want to begin with your front foot just behind the rear bolts along the rail of the board, the heel side rail of the board, with your toes pointing up the length of the board. Now you'll notice that some of my foot is actually hanging off the heel side rail. Now I like to have my back foot over the back bolts, over the rear truck bolts, with most of my foot, most of my back foot actually hanging off of the toe side rail. You will also notice that my back foot is dipping down and curling over the edge of the toe side rail. Now I'm going to press down on my front foot with enough pressure to start rocking the board over. That's backwards in kind of a kickflip direction. Meanwhile, I'm gonna shift my weight back over my back foot and step up onto my back wheels. Now you'll notice that my weight kind of shifts over to my back foot and my back foot grabs the wheels as the board begins to rotate up onto the rail. And around the time the board hits 45 degrees, my back foot is coming in contact with that back wheel and kind of just riding the wave as the board rotates the last 45 degrees onto the rail. Now there are a few things that you absolutely do not want to do while learning the heel side rail stand. You definitely don't want to jump. If you jump, you're much more likely to over rotate the board or to lose control. And that just leads to sloppy landings or straight up not landing the trick at all. We're not preloading our front foot and flicking it wildly downward. Go slow and think about how that board feels rocking over as you put more weight on your front foot and as you take your weight off of your back foot. One thing that I find helps a lot when you're learning these is hanging that back foot off a ton. You'll notice that not only is my foot over the bolts, but my toes are really hanging off. Really most of my back foot is hanging off that board. For me, that just allows me to get my foot onto my wheel and in contact with my back wheels faster. If I don't have much of my back foot hanging off of the rail, not only will it take longer for me to oh, gain control of my rail and step up onto the rail, I'm also ending with only the toes and maybe the edge of the ball of my foot on the wheel. And that's not a stable or comfortable position to be in when you're landing on a rail stand. We want the ball of your foot and the arch of your foot to be landing on the rail. That's comfortable, that's stable, that's safe. Some people will set up with their front foot square on the rail. While that works for some people, I find I have more control. I have a better feeling of where my board is under me if I'm flat footed and angling my foot up the length of the rail. I'm actually using my whole foot to press the board over. Now, if you are having trouble with rail stands, you can always practice these on carpet or on grass. You can also practice rail stands by having your toe actually planted on the ground. This is how I personally learned my heel side rail stands. I use the same foot positioning that I already talked about. However, I had my toe on the ground stabilizing me before I started pressing down and pulling the board up. This prevents the board from sliding out from under you, kind of keeps you stable. And once you have the toe down rail stand locked down, you can start doing them without that toe down. Or if you're practicing them in the grass, you can slowly transition out of the grass onto the asphalt or concrete or polished marble or granite countertop, whatever you're skating on. I don't know your life. I just work here. Okay, rail walks. Let's do it. Now, usually I would end a single trick tip with a challenge, right? Some sort of trick that you can do with the trick I just taught you if it feels way too easy. Not that any of these are easy. But this next trick in the series will be your challenge, and that's rail walk. Ah. 
I really like this trick because it's kind of flashy, it's fun, it's, it's not entirely difficult, not as difficult as a lot of other tricks in freestyle skateboarding. And you can do it anywhere. You can practice this on carpet, you can practice this without a skateboard on like a little plank of wood in your bedroom. There's not a whole lot that's gonna hold you back from learning this trick, except for you. But I'm here to stop you from not learning this trick. Let's get back on track here. You'll start by getting into a rail stand. From here, we're going to step across. I like to start with my front foot placed in the center of the board with just the ball of my foot in the center of the rail. Now this is going to feel pretty unstable. From this position, you're going to bend your knees, keep your arms out, and quite quickly step across and in front of your front foot with your back foot, landing on the front wheel. So right now you should be all pretzeled up. Now you're going to keep your weight over your back foot unwind your legs, jump off of the wheel, focus on landing with both feet back in your normal position in a heel side rail stand. Let's talk about how to make this easier. There's tricks to this trick. So the first thing that helps this trick immensely is keeping the ball of your foot over the rail of the board. Notice I'm not on my heel, I'm not on my arch, I'm not on the tiptoe of my foot, I'm right on the ball, right on like the meat the pad of my front foot. And if you're having trouble getting that crossover, that first crossover comfortable, work on turning your hips and your shoulders kind of at a 45 degree angle before you do your first step. You might find that you have better balance when your hips and shoulders are turned just a little bit inwards so that you don't have to cross your feet quite as extremely to get into this stance. And lastly, go slow. Make that step quick, but then stop and take your time. As always, slow is smooth, is fast. And although we want to step over quickly to maintain our balance, it's important that we regain our balance in cross foot before we unwind and make that quick hop back to regular rail stance. All of those in-between sections of the trick can be done slowly, even if you're going quickly into the cross step motion and quickly out of the cross step. You need to regain your balance in between, you know what I mean? That rhymed. If you're having a great time with the cross step, step it up. Do maybe a cross step again, wheel to wheel. It's an old Mike Foster move, right? You can really go any direction with this trick and you can mix it up however you like. It's a great way to practice balance. It's a great way to get more comfortable in rail stands and even transitioning into other rail stances like Cooper stance that I just did that little rankers flip out of. Oh, and one more thing, tighten your trucks. If you're having trouble with this trick, your trucks might be kind of loose. I ride 99 or 98A bushings depending on the day. And uh, personally, I like having really tight trucks, really hard bushings for when I'm doing tricks like this. Also, freestyle wheels are a huge help. Having offset freestyle wheels, which I've talked about in previous videos, will make this trick way more stable. All right, so that's two new rail stand tricks for your bag. Let's add one more to this little stationary combo thing so that you can film them, tag us, and we can repost you. And wait, before we get into that last trick, let's see all the people who posted tricks from last week. Sliding your block, depressing my ops, counting all this money game.
everybody who jumped on those rail stands, you're awesome. Uh, it's been awesome to see so many people learning, but I wanna see all of you who did those last ones do these. And especially the yo-yo hop, y'all. Why do we call it the yo-yo hop? That's because I talked to Yo-Yo Schultz and he decided that that's what we're gonna call it now because he didn't know the name. So the yo-yo hop can be done two ways. One way is with your heels on the ground with both feet pointing up the length of the board. This is very similar to the heel side rail stand stance that we talked about last week. From this position, you will want to have both hands on the nose with your fingers wrapped around the edges of the nose on both the heel side and toe side and with your thumbs planted on the grip tape. Bend with your knees, a little bit with your back. We're going to jump off of our back feet and once in the air, we'll be pulling the board up to meet our feet in the air. The reason I like this trick so much is because it teaches you how to jump before you pull the board up. Whether you're learning finger flips or pogos or really any trick where you're jumping and then lifting the board off the ground, the hardest thing to get used to and the hardest timing principle is figuring out how to jump first and then flip the board. And this trick forces you to think about jumping and then pulling the board up to you, which is how pogos work, how finger flips work, how old school kick flips work. To get these down, you'll be focusing on jumping off of your back feet and really pulling the board up to meet those feet. If you try to pull the board up before you jump, you're just gonna throw out your back. Really, that's, that's probably not likely. You'll probably just not get very far off the ground and it'll look awkward. You gotta think about jumping first and then pulling the board up second. And if you want to be more like yo-yo, you can do the trick from a sideways tail stop, that is with your back foot square on the tail and with only your front hand holding the nose. In the center of the nose, my thumb on the grip tape, my fingers curled under my skid plate, I'll bend with my knees and jump directly up while pulling the board up to meet my feet. Now, once I get up in the air, once I do my vertical jump, what I'm doing is pulling the board up and back to sort of alley-oop it up against my feet. And as the board starts to go horizontal, I'm spreading my feet out, pushing my front foot farther forward and focusing on landing with both feet over the trucks. So now that you have the tools, you can put all three tricks together into a combo. Maybe even throw in both versions of the yo-yo hop. But be creative with it, make it your own. Oh, don't get out of breath like me. I hope wherever you are staying right now, whether you're in quarantine or social distancing, whether you have a skate spot to skate at, or you're just trying to make it work in you know, your house, your apartment, wherever. Hope you're finding a way to still skate. And I hope these tricks can help make things still a little bit normal. Get some combos on film, tag me, Tag the FS trick tip and the Waltz freestyle trick tip and we'll repost you. We wanna see your tricks and we wanna show off all the stuff that you're learning at home. So we'll see you soon and uh, keep dancing. Let's do some more tricks.
hope that was in frame. <laughs>